y'all and welcome back to Homestead to Health. My name is Caitlin and today I'm going to be finally showing you uh, my in-ground garden that I've been working on for weeks now. I'm so excited to be sharing this with you today. But before we go over there, I do want to show you around and kind of remind you of the other gardening plots that I have set up um, and what I was able to use last year. So this black tarp area here um, with that little trellis that you can see poking out of the greenhouse this is where I will be planting again this year. I was only able to plant a couple of things in here last year. Um, I put it up pretty late in the summer and what I got started just wasn't started early enough. But this year I'm going to be using it for a couple of uh, squash plants, pumpkin plants, and things like that. Uh, these right here are my raised garden beds. Now these were what I predominantly used last year. I, uh, I don't even think, yeah, it hasn't even been a full year yet since I, I started gardening. But over here in this bed right now that there's only beans and cabbages, this will be used later. It's a good day for airplanes, I guess. This bed, uh, as well as this bed right here, they have things in them now like peas and onions and garlic and cabbage. Uh, that trellis will have a matching trellis put up right there. And that's where two of my cucumber plants are going to go. And in these beds right here, that's where my grains are going to go. I'm going to try to uh, grow a couple of grains that I could feed my chickens with. There's a garden space over there at the end that I could use, but I, I don't necessarily have to. Um, this trough right here, I also used last year for a couple of herbs, including some mint. Now, this mint grew back. It put little searchers out, and it survived all winter. I didn't replant any of it. Um, I do have my lemon thyme over there and a couple of these beans plants. Whoa, what is that? Flower. Oh, for me? Yeah. Thank you. Be careful. Okay. So this is also a gardening area that I have set up and this is strictly for potatoes. And as they climb up, I just keep adding soil until they'll get to the very top. And once they're at the very top, this whole crate should be nothing but big old fat potatoes. This right here is a walkway that I unearthed that uh, leads out of my back door. This area over here last year I grew um, a couple of running squash and pumpkins. I think I'm going to do that again this year. And I've already decided because I had such a hard time with squash bu bugs and squash vine borers. <laughs> Say that seven times fast. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to allow myself this year to use some pesticides just over in this area. Um, I've already selected which plants they were going to be. They're the ones that are ate up the most. Um, with my other squash plants, I plan on doing like companion planting and uh, biodiversity and things like that to, to try to trick the squash bugs. I hope it works, but I just cannot wait for this to be very lush, green, bushy uh, squash plants that are just nuts and crazy. Oh man, the dog has gotten some trash. This is my shade box right underneath my kitchen window and it's got this canopy of trees that it's underneath. I've spoken extensively about this. I've done a video about how I had at first covered it with plastic back in the deep of winter. Um, this seems to be popping full of life and I'm really excited to see what uh, comes out of it. Wow, I know it's really, really, really immature, but look at that little baby radish. We have our first little board flowers coming out. All of our plants are starting to really take off and do well. If anything, they're starting to suffer a little bit from uh, just being cooped up here in the greenhouse. But that is okay, because these big babies, these big mamma jammas, they're about to go to their forever home. So let's go check that out. I'm so excited. So the first thing that I did was I went to a, a Home Depot and for about a hundred bucks I rented a big tiller and I tilled up these five rows. And then I went back and I applied this landscape fabric to be my walking aisles. Um, the weed fabric is going to, what's going to be not only my walkways but it's going to keep the grass at bay so that I don't have to worry about that as well. You see I have my smaller tiller working again. I'm trying because 
I plan on planting uh, within a couple of days. I'm trying to make sure that it's as even as possible and I'm going through with the rake to even it out. And uh, while I'm raking, I'm picking out any big clumps of grass um, and putting it in the bucket to get rid of. So right here is my seed stash. And I try to sit out here and plan out my garden and write down exactly where things are gonna go because I'm such a visual person. And I'm just so excited. I had to see it before I can see it, if that makes sense. Um, this was a bust. I, I, I did not get to do this today uh, simply because I have my girls and toddlers are toddlers, kids will be kids. As much as I love getting my children outside and be a part of these projects and they be a part of, uh, a part of things that are happening around here, I mean just anybody knows that uh, if you're trying to do something, adding two little toddlers to it is a lot like trying to swim in quicksand. <laughs> But they've been pretty great. They've been uh, pretty patient with me today. They didn't get a nap in, but they are playing um, some really loud, weird thing on my phone. And so I'm sure that they're having just the time of their lives. Um, I'm going to walk you around. Like I said, I, I was trying to make my plans, but having kids out here... Uh, my plans are a little foggy. I was able to take a couple of quick videos on my phone to send to my husband Richard and those are about the, the most solid plans that I have so far but let me take you around let me show you kind of what those foggy ideas are um, and maybe that'll be more beneficial to me later as I'm planning. I am so excited to get things uh, in the ground but first comes the plan and then comes marriage and then comes little vegetables in the vegetable carriage. What's the matter? I want no puppy. You want daddy? Yeah. I want daddy too. Here on the very corner of the garden are some uh, Okinawa purple sweet potatoes. The reason that they're in the corner over here is so that uh, they'll be able to go for a long season um, and I don't have to come back here and fuss with them and so I kind of wanted them to be tucked out of the way a little bit and I want to be able to access um, my more needy plants. Right here, I'm gonna call these beds. Uh, right here in these little beds I have 12 of them um, yeah I have 12 of them and those are gonna be you know things like beans peppers tomatoes all of these uh, shorter plants but along this line here like I said the same idea with the potatoes uh, things that can be tucked out of the way until they're needed or needed to harvest all along this um, fence right here because the way I made the fence line as I took some landscaping timbers and cut them in half and using an auger on my drill I put them down in about a foot and then I have three foot tall chicken wire that goes across everything so is this gonna keep the cows in probably not but is it gonna keep bunny rabbits and stuff out and be a great place to trellis some beans absolutely and so that's my plan for this side this side and that side will have running beans on them as well as um, some morning glory flowers because why not you know but on, on this uh, row here I have decided that I'm gonna put sunflowers corn peanuts if you can see my soil this is sandy loom and peanuts love sandy loom so say this row was four tomatoes there's enough space here to plant 28 individual tomatoes and then have them trellis and staked and what have you but because I'm going to be using um, companion planting as ground cover because you can see <laughs> good job you can see that there's plenty of grass and stuff trying to come up I'm going to be using carrots as uh, companion plants I'm going to be using basil and marigold and um, cylindrical beets um, and cylindrical radishes like china rose and stuff so that's what would be going in with tomato plants now the absolute hardest part about this garden is figuring out just where everything is going to go um, i didn't know the square footage before i started seeds and so i'm actually afraid that i don't have enough plants for this garden um, but i have enough seeds for this garden and plus i gotta keep in mind like things will lush up a lot but here, the same idea as um, the other row. So on this row here, I'm going to be planting okra on this side and flowers on the opposite side so that anything that could be poked through here, uh, I want it to be pretty because, like I said, there's a road. And I want whoever is passing by to 
uh, appreciate the beauty of my garden as much as I do. Um, also, where my little gate is over there, I love that gate. <laughs> I put it up. It's kind of a pain in the butt. Um, but I'm excited for a trellis because I'm going to put some Kiss Me Over the Garden Gate flowers there. What you working on? Oh. You don't know? Yeah. Wow. I'm angry at that. You're angry at that? Yeah. Why? So on this row that's going to have the sunflowers and the corn, these things and the, you know, the beans are tucked behind them and then the sunflower and the corn goes in fr uh, front, it's important to remember that those things cast a shadow. And so I'm th pretty certain in this bed right here that um, this will be where I plant things like auric, um, just things that maybe could get a little um, burnt out during the summer whenever it's super, super hot here in Texas. Uh, so I'm, I'm definitely keeping things like that in mind whenever I'm planting my garden. I'm planning on things that get bushy, how bushy they get, companion planting. These are all things that I'm considering. Um, as well as considering, especially on this row, things that would be beautiful for people who pass by to see. So this is definitely a blank canvas, uh, a clean slate, however you want to view it. But I'm so excited. This is like, I just rubbed the genie's bottle and I got all these wishes. I'm super pumped. Um, like I said, I don't know. I don't know if I have enough vegetables to fill this in. I don't have, I don't know if I'm going to be able to. <laughs> like, it's, it's a little intimidating, but in the best possible way. I love being in the garden. I love it. Um, I see that other people have started putting their stuff in early and I know that I said to the camera earlier that I, I might be waiting like an extra two or three weeks but because and the reason was because last year we experienced a late frost that like swiped out a bunch of stuff and I just I'm unlucky and I knew that that would happen to me however I've been looking at the forecast that's supposed to be like a month in advance and we're not supposed to get any more frost and so I, I think I want to err on the side of caution because like I said the bad luck thing but at the same time, I also just kind of want to take the dive. Um, what do you think? If, should I just jump? <laughs> okay guys, so I actually already closed out this video and went on to do my evening tours and um, make dinner, hop in the shower. Uh, so I've already been here and said all this, but I looked out the window and I saw the colors of the sky and I saw my garden and very soon the evening time will get uh, to a point to where I'll be able to actually vlog uh, right here in the golden hour but I had looked out my window and I saw how beautiful my garden looked and I was like I can't close the vlog out without <laughs> showing off just how beautiful this place is going to be. One day very soon I'm going to be coming out here in the evenings and harvesting, pruning, loving and nurturing this garden isn't it amazing? I don't even think it uh, transfers well onto the screen just how beautiful and romantic it already is despite the fact that it's pretty blank right now. Okay guys, thank you so much again for hanging out with me. I'm gonna let the past me bid y'all adieu. <laughs> but uh, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you really enjoyed uh, seeing the garden. Um, I know that it's not really much to look at now, but it, this has been a definite labor of love. This has been hours and hours and weeks upon weeks. Um, I've re I've, when I say I've put blood, sweat, and tears into what's going on around here, I, I definitely mean it very literally. 